I congratulate uh, Sidron, all its members, but particularly its leadership for your success to date, including the organization of the second annual conference, which I personally and the entire military medical community are very eager to support. I also congratulate you, Ms. McLeod, as a representative of the federal government for your leadership, the government's leadership and its foresight specifically in sponsoring this collaborative network as well as all the other work that's been done in support of, mental, of fighting mental illness. This collaboration is particularly important to the armed forces and the partnership between the Royal Canadian Medical Service and Sidron Partners predated Sidron's establishment. For example, we've worked with the Mental Health Commission of Canada for many years to disseminate our experience and our expertise in mental health education and resilience training. Our road to mental readiness programs now reaching police forces, first responders, universities, other employers, uh, as well as the men and women of the Canadian Armed Forces. We've also worked with the Mood Disorders Society of Canada to develop a continuing medical education program on post-traumatic stress disorder for primary care physicians, while the Royal Ottawa and the University of Ottawa's Institute for Mental Health Research have been long-standing partners of the Armed Forces. They house an operational stress injury clinic. They've been research partners with the Armed Forces for many years, <clears throat> either directly or through the Canadian Institute for Military and Veteran Health Research. So for us, the Royal was a natural and an optimal place for us to establish the Canadian Forces Brigadier Jonathan C. Meekins Chair in Military Mental Health, which we hope to, will contribute significantly as well as benefit from the mental health research and experience that comes from that institution and the network entirely. I'm sure you're all aware that PTSD in the armed forces is a very big concern after a decade of combat and psychological trauma among our troops in Afghanistan, but our, our greater long-term concern in many respects is depression, given that the rate among military personnel is about double that of the age and sex matched general population for for reasons related to the unique stresses of military service, but other reasons that we don't entirely understand yet. But quantitatively, the burden of suffering that depression, PTSD, and suicide impose on a broader general Canadian population and economy really dwarfs the impact on the armed forces. As for all and large and really complex problems like this one, it'll take the efforts of many, many in individuals and institutions over a prolonged period to reduce that burden. Just stigma alone, for example, was a long time major obstacle to care seeking in the military culture. But it's been greatly, greatly mitigated over the past decade with military personnel now having far less stigma, suffering from far less stigma with respect to their willingness to present for care than the general Canadian population and they are presenting far earlier than in the past with greater insight about their conditions, greater engagement in their treatment, and with very few hesitating because of externally imposed stigma. But this success, it came from extensive, prolonged, dedicated, and persistent efforts at education and culture change involving a very broad and extensive collaboration inside the armed forces, inside government, and across the whole country with external partners. But if it can be done, in such a stoic and self-sacrificial culture as the armed forces, then at least some improvements should be possible in the broader Canadian population. The approach that Sidron's taking to tackle these issues is very similar to the approach outlined in our military mental health strategy released last year. And we see this year's conference theme of innovation plus collaboration equals transformation as the only way forward to achieve success. Given the chronic illness and the many suicides that occur among people who are already receiving care. Ongoing research and innovation are particularly critical, but no one has the capacity to do it all alone. Collaboration is essential with scientists, community leaders, clinicians, and people with lived experiences having to join together in networks to offer the benefits of their different skills, resources, and perspectives. It's also critical that we innovate to make optimum use of things like, for example, technologies in seeking creative ways to improve care and outcomes for our patients. But education is also key for many, many reasons. That's what will eventually bring about the, the broad cultural change that we need to reduce stigma and encourage help-seeking behavior. 
It's also essential to bring about the knowledge translation that's necessary to disseminate the great work of the clinicians and scientists, the family physicians, and more broadly, to those suffering a mental illness. Looking at the agenda uh, yesterday, I can see that the next two days will offer you a tremendous opportunity, given the combination of top researchers, expert clinicians, and those with lived experience. And I note that the first panel will look at PTSD, and I'm thrilled that such an experienced officer and advocate as General Shirelli could join us. Personally, after 37 years of government service, I'm very optimistic about the strides in mental health we've made so far and that we might expect in the future. Some research findings in therapy and in technological developments in such areas as neuroimaging are very promising. And optimism, I think, is particularly justifiable given the synergistic effect of collaboration that might be expected from organizations like Sidron. It might be overdue, but it is, I think, for many of us, very encouraging to see, to see the greater attention that's now being devoted to mental health across Canadian society generally, as well as by government, which is doing so much for mental health. For example, the, the current government is devoting over six times more resources per capita for the mental health care of military personnel than do any of the provinces. Each one of you here today bring something very important to Sidron's very noble mission to create and share knowledge for a more effective prevention, early diagnosis and treatment of depression and related illnesses, which cause such horrible suffering among such a large proportion of our population. I hope you enjoy the next two days, that they're fruitful and that you return all of you safely home with new knowledge, contacts and planned collaborations that will contribute to mitigating this terrible scourge that has a national security impact on armed forces and a broad general impact economically and on the lives of so many people across this country. Congratulations for your dedication, your devotion to this mission, and I wish you all very well. Thank you.